Hi everybody, Gary Fong here from Portland, Oregon, where I'm here on the invitation of my friends at Sony, where they are giving me the next three days to play with their new cameras, the uh, highly celebrated Sony Alpha 7 R2 and the RX10 II. Also, the RX104, which I'm going to be testing extensively in a separate premium video, as well as these two cameras. Now, obviously, the uh, A7R2 has been a very, very uh, celebrated camera in the media because of the new technology of not only a 45 megapixel uh, full frame sensor, but also the ability to use what's called a back illuminated sensor. And the back illuminated sensor, just to make it very, very simple for you, means that you have much higher ISO sensitivity than you ever had before because the old cameras, before they did the back illuminated sensor, had a, a layer of wiring in between the photodiode and the sensor, which blocked out light. They move the wiring behind the photodiode and the sensor, enabling these cameras to have much, much higher ISO sensitivity. So the new cameras all have this uh, back illuminated sensor as, uh, as the A7R2, but when they showed me this one here, this was really quite interesting to me. This is called the RX10, and this is a thousand dollar camera. Let me go through the, uh, the things that this thing has. First of all, it is native 4K. This will shoot up to half an hour in 4K under the new uh, envelope, which is called XAV, uh, XAVC. And the XAVC envelope is a very professional format. It has um, cinematic features like uh, S-Log and, and um, picture profiles, things that we're only going to go into a ton of detail when we start to do premium videos on how to do cinematography on these cameras. But from what I know about digital cinematography, this camera at $1,000 has more than one could ever imagine. First of all, it has a 24 to 200 millimeter equivalent f2.8 lens and uh, that is quite an amazing feature because to have that type of a focal length in a single zoom lens before was impossible i mean on my canons or my a mount sony's it would be i'd pay i think you know between three and five thousand dollars or something like that to get a 70 to 200 f2.8 lens uh, granted those are at uh, full frame size but that equivalent to be able to do something like that zoom lens would only be 20, uh, 70 to 200. Then I would have to have another lens that would be 24 to 70 and so I would have to interchange lenses. This guy right here has a 24 to 200 equivalent f2.8. Now also what's nice for cinema is that you have the ability to detach the uh, click wheel. So right here you can hear that you have the uh, focus aperture. And then when I change a, uh, a knob here, this will then become a smooth aperture or auto iris. Now, that's really great if you're doing video so that you can change your ISO while filming the video. And if you have this on auto ISO, then your background uh, defocusness will then go in and out very smoothly without having to hear the clicks. And that's something that you wouldn't really care about in still photography because you would just be, you know, f2.8, f4, or whatever. And having said that, by the way, having been a Hasselblad photographer for such a long time, it's really cool to have an aperture wheel that you can click. So it's very intuitive to go all the way back and shoot at f2.8. And then if I want to close it down just a little bit, I just kind of move it over to closed and, and, and like that. Or if I want to be in video, then I just simply put it on the smooth and I can change the ISO. It will record, I don't know if I already mentioned this, but it will record at um, uh, almost a thousand frames per second. There's a little knob here called HFR, which means high frame rate. The high frame rate allows you to be able to shoot at, I think, what is it, uh, 30, 60, 60 times 40, 40 X, well, it depends if you're shooting 24, it doesn't matter. What matters is it's 960 frames per second slow motion, which is very, very uh, slow motion, and that that is a cool feature 
to be able to have on a camera, unheard of before. Also, it has um, back illuminated sensor, so you have uh, ISO of up to, uh, I think it's 25,000 or 12,800, no it's 25,600. Also the other thing about having the lens built in is the stabilization is in the lens. It's a uh, optical stabilizer in the lens. It's not 5-axis stabilization like one would find in the 7R Mark II, but at the price at about a thousand dollars what this gives you is the ability to have, and it really uh, feels very much like a, um, a digital SLR. It's kind of, uh, you know, one would say it's in between the point and shoot and the professional camera. But other than the sensor size being at one inch and not full frame, this camera has a lot of features that a professional would use especially having everything in one lens, especially having it all in uh, 4K. Also, something that I th think is really extremely important for my needs now is it has microphone recording, either through the uh, top where you can use one of their XLR attachments or you can put it in the red thing right here and have sound. So I have the ability of doing 4K video with smooth aperture wheel like I have in my uh, 24 to 135 very very expensive I think it's a 3000 some odd dollar lens cinema lens that I use with my mirrorless but uh, quite a shocker in fact I really didn't know too much about the RX10 uh, until I received it in today's bag to play around with it and quite excited. Another thing too, by the way, is it is a motorized zoom. So you can see that I can I can uh, do this, and you can hear it just kind of go in and out, which is nice. And then uh, it has, of course, manual focus and zebra and all of those things. Focus peaking that one would expect in uh, pretty much a professional video camera. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video, and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel where we've got hundreds of instructional videos, and we also come out with new content all the time. Remember that subscribers get first crack at the new content.